Stay tuned to learn about Daniel Stark's strategic process for evaluating personal injury cases. One of the things, Jonathan, that I also found unique about your firm is the way that you value the case and how the full value of the case matters. Could you speak to the methodology or the conceptual idea that your firm uses for this? Uh, sure. I think it's actually a, a two-pronged approach. One of them, and you referenced full value matters. We actually have a review process here. We call it FSV, where it's a committee of attorneys helping all of the attorneys determine the full settlement value of these cases. You know, the reality of being a personal injury lawyer is you spend the majority of your time as it relates to talking about case value in dealing with insurance adjusters. And so if a law firm doesn't have a process where uh, a committee of lawyers is involved in determining the value of the cases, I think we run the risk of allowing our younger attorneys to be trained by insurance adjusters on what these cases are worth. And that is certainly, certainly not appropriate. And it's not what we do here at Daniel Stark. And so that FSV, <clears throat> that FSV committee, full settlement value committee, is a critical component to us as a law firm fulfilling our purpose, which is to keep our clients from getting screwed by big insurance companies. I'm sure we'll talk more about that later on. The other process though that we utilize here at Daniel Stark is called a big case review. I think as a law firm, we do a great job of handling those cases that clearly have a significant value potential. However, I think one of the, the challenges that a lot of law firms face is really recognizing those cases that could be bigger cases. And so the way we do that here at Daniel Stark is a process called big case review. And essentially, that is a review in which a, a more experienced attorney, typically myself, will meet with the younger lawyers and help them evaluate those cases that involve either a commercial defendant or cases where there's identified at least 250,000 or more in insurance coverage. You know, one of the things that is challenging in every state um, and, and, and is challenging here in Texas is the fact that you have people catastrophically injured by an individual who may be only carrying $30,000 in insurance, which is the minimum limits in Texas. And so, those cases are gut-wrenching, and it's, it's hard to, to make that math work for these people who've been horrifically injured. But conversely, on those cases where we do have either a commercial defendant or significant insurance policies, it's just a, a real opportunity for us to leverage those kinds of things that maximize value. Things like life care plans, things like accident reconstructionists, vocational rehabilitationists, and other experts that can really come in and make a difference. So by using full settlement value committees in the big case review process, we are ensuring that we are maximizing all of those opportunities to maximize our clients recovery and to help keep them from getting screwed by big insurance companies. Wow. That's a, that's an interesting process. And it's very, um, it feels like it's very methodical the way your firm handles those. And so I guess my follow-up question would be how long has your firm been managing the portfolio this way and how have the results kind of manifested themselves? So great questions. Uh, we have been following the, the FSB process. Gosh, years and years. Uh, I honestly couldn't tell you how long. And, and in fairness, let me give credit to Chad Dudley and the Dudley DeBosier firm in Louisiana. We, we heard about a similar process that they used many years ago. Uh, and, you know, as, as uh, lawyers, it's often the best to just rip off and duplicate what other people are doing well. And so we, we adopted that process from them. Donna, it's been, I, I don't know, 10 plus years. Uh, and it has made a difference. It's one of those things that's been so impactful. I cannot imagine ever going back to a, a, a place where we didn't use a full settlement value committee. Big case review is a, is a more recent iteration uh, of our firm. I would say that process has been happening for the last two, uh, at the most, three years. And, and frankly, it has been one of the most impactful things that we have done as a law firm, I, I can, you know, you talked earlier about the cases that matter, right? Some of those um, historic or memorable cases that, that shaped our firm. 
I think early on in the big case review process, we saw some of these kinds of things. I'll give you one example. We represented a, a gentleman named Terry. Uh, Terry was a truck driver and was injured when a car pulled out in front of him. It wasn't a, a catastrophic kind of, of injury that he suffered, but Terry had debilitating headaches as a result of the collision. And through the big case review process, uh, I came to learn that in negotiating with a third party insurance company, we finally got them to tender uh, their minimum $30,000 policy. And our office called, and I'll get the dates wrong, so I'll just give you days of the week. Our office called Terry, let's say it was a Friday, to let him know that the third party had tendered their limits. Terry's wife answered the phone and let us know that on Wednesday, he had passed away. Oh. It was, yeah, very, very sad situation. Um, but in inquiring about what happened, we learned that Terry had a heart attack. Uh, and so follow-up questions revealed that Terry had had a history of heart problems, uh, had been well diagnosed. And so for a lot of law firms, I think the case kind of ends there. Uh, you know, you would go through the process of formalizing the settlement and then getting those proceeds um, to Terry's wife. But because of big case review, we looked further because you see there was a, a million dollar underinsured motorist policy uh, that offered protection for the truck that Terry was in. And it turns out that one week before Terry's heart attack, he was put on a new medication for his debilitating headaches. We hired a pharmacologist and a doctor, and we learned that that medication was contraindicated for people with Terry's known heart condition. And so through the use of experts, uh, we were able to get a report that said as a foreseeable and proximate result of the medication that Terry was put on, his heart attack was in fact causally related uh, to the car wreck. And after that, the underinsured motorist carrier tendered the majority of their insurance limits. And so we were able to take what was probably a $30,000 result and a catastrophic loss for this poor gentleman's wife. And instead, through systems and processes and through, frankly, the ability to, to hire experts, an ability that, that is in large part due to the backing of Advocate Capital, we were able to uh, get Terry's widow the full value that she deserved. And systems and processes are the things that, that make those cases normal. You know, lawyers, a lot of lawyers hear about these kinds of results and they want to say, oh, that's, a, that's an outlier or that's a unicorn. Sounds great, but I doubt I'll ever <laughs> see one. Um, and they're not, you know, I used to think that myself when I heard lawyers talk about extraordinary results and what seemed like ordinary cases, but they're not through systems and processes and ensuring that we are looking for these opportunities to maximize the difference we can make for our clients. Uh, I have found through these processes that these cases are not outliers. They are out there and it's just our job to find them. Fantastic. What a uh, what a tragic story, but um, kudos to your firm for not just taking the, the minimum amount of limits and continuing to investigate. Uh, and, and I know it made a difference for, for the widow and, and taking care of her for the rest of her life. So Sure. I mean, she had just lost everything. I mean, lost her husband and her financial future was at risk. And so, yeah, it, I think as lawyers, we can sometimes forget that what we do, I mean, it really matters in the lives of people way beyond the money that we recover for them. You know, in these civil cases, it, one of the brutal realities is that money is the only remedy. Uh, and if we as lawyers allow ourselves to then translate that into meaning that money is all that matters, boy, we're missing the point. And uh, I just think that's something we have to guard against. And we're, we're very careful here at Daniel Stark to never lose sight of the fact that we are helping real people at really vulnerable times in their lives. And it is a great calling and a privilege and, a, and an honor to be able to do so. 